Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a first impressions and demo on the new Selena Gomez's makeup line. I know a lot of people have talked about this already, but I feel like I have some things to say that maybe they didn't say because at first I honestly didn't like half the products and I was really, really disappointed. But after I kind of figured out that I shouldn't should be applying them like a different way or wearing them a different way, I started to really like that other half of the products. So I really want to talk about that. But before I step into anything, I want to talk about the actual um, company. All the packaging have a ball on the top as you can see and this was made for people with arthritis or lupus in mind because it's easier to open which I had no idea which I think that's amazing it's really on brand with Selena Gomez because she struggles with lupus the brand's goal is to donate hundred million dollars to mental illness foundations it's vegan and cruelty free and the packaging is eco-friendly so it is a really good brand to support and on top of that I wear really natural makeup I rarely ever wear foundation today I'm obviously gonna wear the foundation but I like that this brand is for people who sorry my cat my cat is playing hi in her little can I get a video of you my cat is playing in her tube and she's there she is oh my god she's making a ton of noise but anyways back to what I was saying I really like that this brand encourages people to enhance their natural beauty and a lot of these products are lighter which is really my cup of tea I love light products um, I don't wear a lot of makeup on a daily basis and I really like cream products okay so now I'm gonna list all the products I got I didn't get all of them but I kind of got I feel like the most popular ones so first I got the rare beauty liquid touch weightless foundation in the lightest shade 100w I got the Liquid Touch Concealer, also in 100W. Something I really like about this is it is lighter than the foundation. Sometimes when the concealers and foundations match up, they're the same shade, but this one actually is lighter, so it actually highlights on my fair skin, which is great. Now Cleo's playing with her little toy that makes noise. And then a product I couldn't resist is the Liquid Blush. This is called the Soft Pinch Blush, and I got the shade Joy, which is like a corally shade. The product that I was by far most excited about was the liquid highlighter. The reasoning is because obviously I have fair skin and finding a white highlighter is the hardest thing ever. It's called the Positive Light Liquid Luminator and I got the lightest shade in Enlighten. And I wasn't planning on picking up a lip product, but I saw this color. I love Dusty Rose colors, so I had to get this. It's called the Lip Souffle Matte Lip Cream, and it's in the shade Courage. It's just like such a pretty dusty rose mauve color, but I'm just going to jump right into my first impressions. As I said, I did try the products, some of them yesterday, but I didn't wear them for that long at all. But I'm going to show you how they wear on my skin and kind of how they didn't work for me yesterday, but how I, found I made them work for me now. Okay, I'm a lot more up close now, and the first thing I'm going to do, because I realized the foundation yesterday was honestly a little bit too drying on my skin, so I'm going to go in with my Stila One Step Correct Primer. This primer is very hydrating, and I'm just going to be putting it on the left side of my face, just so I can still see, you know, how the foundation lasts on my skin without a primer. So now that that's on the left side of my skin, I'm going to go in with the foundation. So I really like the packaging. I think it looks like so high-end and cool. It does come with one of those applicators that's like... You know, and it's weird. I don't know. Hear that? <laughs> but it's like, um, just like a, you know, a doe foot applicator. So yesterday I made the mistake of putting on too much product because I thought it was going to be a lot more sheer, but it actually is really buildable and you can definitely get like almost a full coverage with it. So I'm not going to put on a lot at all. I'm going to put three dots on my cheeks. Maybe like three dots around my forehead and some right there so I'm not gonna put a lot so her brand does sell a like beauty blender type thing I didn't buy it I used the Morphe one and I really like it but I would 100% recommend going in with a sponge with this foundation as you can see it just blends out so easily and I don't know I'm gonna try to show it on camera it is one of the smoothest looking foundations I've ever tried and it was so weird like I don't know I don't even know how to explain it it's just my skin looked so like soft now the foundation was not one of the products i didn't like at first so i think this is actually great and i would recommend it especially if you are someone who doesn't like to wear heavy makeup okay so the side with the primer i'm gonna get really up close so you can see the foundation the side with the primer right up here towards my forehead is less dry because the primer is more hydrating i noticed that i got some dry spots here yesterday when i didn't use a primer but other than that it's really not a drying foundation at all it's just if you have drier skin at the moment i would recommend using a hydrating primer but as you can see it's just it's such like a natural light coverage but like you could obviously build it to medium but it just looks so like natural on the skin and smooth 
Now me going in with the concealer. It also has one of those tops for, you know, like arthritis or people have, who have trouble opening things. The thing about this is that the, the um, doe foot is like curved, which I thought was really strange and I thought I wasn't gonna like it at first. So I really like the curved doe foot because you can actually really easily just get under your eyes like that. I didn't think, I don't know, it's just, it's so smooth. And I'm only gonna put it on my chin and under my eyes. So with this, I really do like using a beauty blender and I'm really, really happy that the concealer is a lighter shade in the foundation so it kind of highlights on my fair skin, which is hard to find. I'm actually gonna put some extra, I have some like pimples right here and I wanna see how it covers. So as you can see, the concealer I'd say is like light or medium coverage. More towards medium though, it had way more coverage than I assumed, especially when you see when I blend out my under eyes, it actually covers more than like a kind of lighter concealer. Like it really gets rid of those dark circles. So I'm gonna wait to set anything until I apply the liquid blush and liquid highlighter. So the liquid blush, this was the product that I hated. I hated it so much when I first tried it and I was so sad and mad at the same time. But I realized, so at first I took the liquid blush. My cat is still playing in its tube. At first I took the liquid blush and I did like three dots or maybe two dots and it is so pigmented. And being pigmented is a good thing. It's just, I wasn't expecting it and it just looked like an orange mess on my cheek. So you really have to take the product and like rub off as much as you can. And I also use a beauty blender to blend this out. And I've always used a beauty blender with cream blushes, but something about the beauty blender just kind of made the foundation come off under the blush. I really didn't like it. So instead, I saw someone else do this. I did watch like another review because I wanted to know if anyone else thought the same things that I thought. What I'm gonna do is just put some on the back of my hand. Then I'm gonna take a like duo fiber brush and I'm gonna rub around in it. Now I'm gonna lightly place it on my cheeks. See how just that little amount is so pigmented? And then I go in with a beauty blender and just blend out the edges. And I think this is the foolproof way to apply this blush, especially if you're having difficulty with it, like taking off your foundation underneath. I did use this blush um, normally like on my bare skin and I prefer the cream products on my bare skin rather than over foundation. I mean, I don't wear foundation anyway, so that's kind of how I would use them. And I do prefer them just on my bare skin. I feel like it looks more natural and I don't have to worry about it like taking up anything underneath because there's nothing underneath. I can't take myself seriously. I feel like it looks like I have a sunburn because it's just so pigmented, but in person it's not as like intense. But now I'll be going in with the liquid um, highlighter this was the product that I was most disappointed about. Maybe it was because I was most excited about this product to begin with, and it just, it took off, once again, so much foundation. Like, the minute I put it on, it just, like, wouldn't, it, like, I tapped it in with my finger, and it just started taking off everything underneath it, and it made this, like, weird line between the blush and the highlighter. I later used it on bare skin, and it looks incredible. On bare skin, it looks so pretty, which I'm sure is mostly what it's intended for anyways, but I'm gonna do the same technique that I did with the blush. So, first of all, can we appreciate how much product is in there? Um, but I'm gonna put a lot on the back of my hand, and I'm gonna be going in with a stiffer, this is a Real Techniques brush, but it's a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna dip in a little bit. I'm just gonna be placing this in the normal like highlight areas. See, okay, using a brush is definitely the way to go and don't rub it too much because it will like move things around. But if you place it like that with a brush, right? And then once again, you go in with the side of the beauty blender that didn't have blush on it. And you just kind of tap it out. It does just blend in and look so natural this way. I, I don't know why, something with my finger, just it took off everything underneath. It looked honestly terrible and I was so upset because I heard such good things about it. But it's really all about application and I really like it now. I think it's beautiful. It does set down just like the um, blush did. See how it just looks so like fresh and naturally glowy? I really do love it. I'm, I was so upset last night when I hated this product and then I watched a review and they were like, yeah, the beauty blender didn't work. And I was like, oh, maybe that's where I went wrong. But I'm also gonna take some of this highlighter and put it down the center of my face. So I'm gonna put a little bit lately on my chin, Cupid's bow and nose. I'm not gonna go on my forehead and blend this. 
I think the true test of this makeup will see how it lasts throughout the day because anyone can sit in front of here apply makeup and be like yeah it looks great you know but it really does how it lasts throughout the day is what the makeup is about I mean to me it is and if the makeup can't last it's not worth it so the main thing I didn't like about the concealer when I tried it, it was that it creased automatically. I did just use a normal powder. So now I'm gonna go in and bake instead and see how this works. So I'm just gonna go in, tap that. See, it already creased my eyelids, but I can just tap that out and dab that. I'm also gonna bake my chin and like the crease of my chin and also a little bit around my nose. Okay, so my camera's about to die and I'm gonna go charge it and do the rest of my makeup. I'm just gonna bake the other eye. I wipe off the bake immediately after, like right after I do the other eye, I'm just gonna wipe it all off. I don't let it sit for too long. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'm gonna come back to talk about the lip product and then just like final thoughts and then I'm gonna do the wear test. I just realized I wasn't filming, which is why I like have half the lipstick on, but I'm just gonna put this on for you, show, it how, show you how it works, but it actually is so similar to the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams, but it's like thicker and way softer and creamier. It's so weird, it's so buttery, smooth, and soft on your lips. It's like you have to try it, but it actually lasts a pretty long time too. I think I had it on for a couple hours yesterday, and it didn't like wear a ton, but I'm gonna go back to my demonstration now that I'm actually filming, and I'll show you. So it has one of those like doe foot applicators that just presses, you know, like right into your lip right like that. So it is like really easy to apply. Okay, I'm back in a different outfit because my camera died again, but I was finished applying all the makeup so it didn't really matter. I'm just gonna talk really fast before it dies again. I'm gonna jump right into the wear test. Um, I'm gonna go babysit for an hour. I'll probably, it's 8.20 in the morning right now. Oh, I'm trying to get all this out before it dies again. Um, I'll probably touch back in with you guys in about two hours, three hours, probably like 10.30 or 11. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the products. So yeah, I'm gonna jump right into that. Okay, so it's actually about 20 minutes later, but I wanted to show you what it looks like in natural lighting on my camera after it's, of course, been charged because it's died like a million times. But I want to... But I want to really show you what it looks like. Um, it doesn't settle into like any pores or anything around my nose. It actually looks so smooth. Something about this foundation, I don't know how to describe it, is so smoothing and it just looks so good. The concealer was able to actually cover up some like I have some pimples on like the my upper lip area and they actually did cover it up like really well you see do you see that and the concealer looks especially smooth like right under here it's like it's also so soft to the touch it's kind of crazy but okay so now that we're in natural lighting I'm hoping maybe you can see the highlighter on my nose and what I'm talking about it looks it just looks really bad on my nose and I <laughs> part of me doesn't even want to like wear this out but whatever it's a wear test I want to see what it looks like I mean the rest of the foundation looks really good it's just the highlighter on my nose for some reason is really like it looks like it's on top of my skin and not blended at all and even on my cheeks I don't even know if you can see that it just it kind of like went away after I like kind of baked my under eye and it also kind of looks like it's sitting on top of my skin. If you are someone who doesn't wear a lot of makeup, I think these cream products would be so good for you because they do set down and they do last a pretty long time. Like when I wore them yesterday, I noticed that. But the only thing is I just feel like they look a little bit strange on foundation. The blush looks less strange. <laughs> it looks a lot better, but I would still, I feel like there's something about it that looks a little off where I would rather just wear a powder one. But I'm so excited to use these products on bare skin and I think that's what these are really made for anyways but yeah I just want to touch on that before I jump into the wear test I really really am liking the foundation though I'm kind of impressed and I'm not someone who ever wears foundation or really likes it say hi to my cat Cleo want to say hi oh she's been a terror this morning ripping up my new bed having a cat is so much fun <laughs> okay I am back from babysitting and I'll show you on my phone it's 10 37 a.m so it's been about two hours and i'm gonna come a little bit closer okay so here is an overview of the makeup i am honestly very very impressed with the foundation it looks i was outside babysitting with the kids and it looked so good i kind of looked at my car mirror it looked really natural and like you know daylight which is really hard for a foundation to do it looked really good and keep in mind i did apply a light layer the concealer let's see i'm gonna take a closer look Okay, so the concealer, can you see how it um, creased on my chin a little bit? And I did bake there. So this concealer, I feel like will definitely crease. Maybe I should have baked for a little bit longer, but under my eyes, it hasn't creased yet. And I almost always get creasing on my chin anyways. Plus I applied foundation and concealer on my chin. So it's like a heavy layer. 
I'm gonna come really close so you can see like my eyelid area. There's a tiny bit creasing like in the inner area. Okay, and um, there's also some creasing around my nose as you can see, and I did also bake that. So that's something that I have found. I, f I realized that yesterday when I was using the concealer, I don't think it's the foundation. I'm pretty positive it's just the concealer. That creases a little bit. Um, maybe if you baked a little bit more or added more powder, it wouldn't do that. But if you have a problem with creasing, probably this isn't con the concealer for you, but it is a really like natural concealer. And maybe if you use also less product, you know, it, it's all about playing around with different powders that interact with the concealer. I know they sell a powder too. Maybe if you use that powder, it won't crease. It's just it's like a it's like a back and forth game of using products and seeing which one works the best with them the blush is still on my cheek I mean it's only been two hours I would expect it to I feel like it's faded a tiny bit because remember how orange my cheeks were this morning um the highlighter's still there the highlighter hasn't faded at all but in natural lighting I still I felt like the highlighter looked like cakey which is weird for a highlighter to look cakey but it just like was set it sitting on top of my skin like I said so I do still like the blush it did like dry down to completely matte I would probably also set it with a powder blush on top just normally um the highlighter not the biggest fan on top of foundation at all but it looked beautiful on natural skin without it so I'm still going to be using these products and I want to do a video later on maybe a tutorial showing you how I use it on my natural skin because I just think it looks so much better that way. Oh and the lip product did rub off. I was eating and drinking. Um, I might reapply it. I really do like that one. It's just like it's such a pretty color. It's creamy. It's a tiny, tiny bit drying um, after wearing it for a little bit, but I also have really dry lips because I wear like, I use like acne products. Also, the side that I put primer on looks no different than the other side, so that's good too. Okay, so I'm once again in a different setting because I'm, I'm in front of my big window to get more natural lighting so you can kind of see the foundation, but it's 121, so it's been, oh my god, it's been five hours I've been wearing this foundation. That's kind of crazy, but I have my mirror right here. I'm just gonna look. So first of all, here's a close-up and natural lighting. So as you can see, the blush is still standing pretty strong. It's lasted a long time. Um, cream blushes often fade really fast, so I'm pretty impressed, but it's still definitely faded a little bit. The concealer is actually holding up quite well under my eyes. It's like I said, it did crease yesterday, but with the baking, it hasn't creased at all under my eyes, just, you know, on my chin area. Also, if you look around my um, pore area, some of the foundation and concealer is settling onto my pores a little bit so there's like little dots sort of showing up that usually happens with any foundation and it is around the five hour mark so it's kind of expected but for the five hour mark the foundation actually looks really good like my forehead looks like really airbrushed it looks very pretty it's sometimes so hard to show things on camera but if you look at my highlighter it just looks like a big strip of highlight on like it doesn't look blended at all even though i use like a beauty blender after it just looks it looks icky like the worst thing on my face is definitely the highlighter right now but like I said on bare skin it actually looks very good I just not on top of foundation I don't want to talk too much but I'm probably gonna check in one more time at like the eight hour mark and talk about how it looks so yeah okay so this is gonna be my last check-in it's about 4 p.m. and it's been about seven hours so I'm gonna zoom in and really show you up close all the products and then add, I mean all the things in my face and then after I'm gonna kind of rate each product out of 10 and just tell you my final thoughts okay so this close-up that you're seeing is actually filmed two hours later and the reason is because the footage from the previous close-up video that I did was it was all lost but not the other stuff so after this little close-up I'm gonna go back to two hours ago but it's 6 30 right now and I'm actually still wearing the foundation I just really want to show you it up close okay so I'm really really hoping you can see everything um it looks a little bit worse than two hours ago obviously because it's it's been a long time but basically the foundation started breaking up around this area in my upper lip there's like little like dots and pory areas showing my nose looks pretty bad I feel like I'm not really in natural daylighting because it's gotten a little bit darker but in the clips that were deleted and lost or whatever you could really tell how much it was breaking up on my nose and how weird the highlighter looked. Um, it's also breaking up in little dots on my chin. My cat just jumped off of that and it started rolling. I was so spooked for a minute. Okay, and the concealer did crease, as you can see, under both of my eyes. Not like a ton, but enough where like it's kind of annoying and it also started creasing after like two hours anyways. The blush is still intact after eight hours and that's like a pretty big deal. It's kind of won me over a little bit. Um, the highlighter is kind of completely gone or it looks like streaky and weird. But I'm really hoping you can see how the foundation is broken up. If I get really close and you see 
everything wrong with my skin. Also, I almost forgot to mention the side that's primed, my left side, it's a little bit more intact on that side, but it didn't make too much of a difference. Also, this foundation didn't really make me oily at all. There's maybe a tiny bit. I mean, I haven't been running around, I haven't been outside in the heat or anything, but still, that's pretty impressive. But okay, so overall, the foundation I think has real potential. I just think I have to work with different powders with it, work with different setting sprays, work with different primers and really see what, what works for it. My favorite foundation currently is actually a drugstore foundation. It's the Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundation. I swear by that. It looks better on the skin. I like the seven hour mark than this foundation does. Um, because of that, I'm just gonna give it like a six out of 10. I mean, it has potential and I really do like it. It has such a smooth finish. I just think I haven't really found the products that work the best with it yet. Now onto concealer. I feel so bad because the concealer's finish is amazing. It's so like smooth and it actually has really good coverage and I like it and it's natural, but the creasing does it for me. And I know it's just after two hours, the concealer was already creasing under my eyes. And I did sort, I mean, I baked for a little bit with it. Um, and then it immediately creased on my chin and the normal concealer I use every day is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. Um, I also use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I recently got that one in my hauls and those just don't crease on me. So because of the creasing, I have to say the concealer is like a 3 out of 10 for me just because I'll never really use it again. I Maybe I'll try to highlight with it or something, but the creasing is kind of a deal breaker. But once again, it always depends on your skin and the products and the setting spray and the powder, like how products will react on your skin. So maybe the concealer is great for you or great for someone else, but maybe it's just not great for me. Now onto the blush. The blush won me over the longer I was wearing it. Cause honestly, at first I didn't really like it. I probably would have been like, yeah, it's a five out of 10, whatever. But the fact that it lasted so long on my skin and actually looks good, it looks better the longer I wore it. I would give it like around a six out of 10 for wearing it on foundation, maybe a seven out of 10. But the blush on bare skin is beautiful. Oh my God, it's so pretty. That's like an eight out of 10. On just bare skin, nothing underneath it. The highlighter on foundation, once again, that was the biggest thing that I didn't like in this video at all. The highlighter on foundation for some reason on my skin, it made the foundation move like underneath and it also like just looked so strange and like stripey throughout the day. So for if you're gonna put the highlighter on foundation, that rating's probably like a two out of 10, maybe one out of 10, but the highlighter on bare skin is beautiful. Oh my God, that's like a 10 out of 10. I don't understand how it could be so, I mean, I get how it could be so different, but it just blends so much nicer on bare skin rather than on top of foundation. And then lastly, for the lip product, I love that. That's probably my like number one favorite thing out of everything, because lip products are easy. I mean, it's kind of hard to mess them up anyways. Um, the color is beautiful. It's so soft and smooth on the lips, and I just, that's my favorite color lip product. If anyone ever comes out with that product, it's automatically a 10 out of 10 in my book. I really do enjoy them and they had so many shades and they have so many shades of foundation and concealer. It's really an inclusive brand and they stand for so many great things. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have bought them or, you, or you're gonna buy them, I would like to know what you're gonna buy or what you have bought, what you think of the products. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like and I'll see you in my next video.